Hello guys, I should gameplay I'm Fabio Pisco. Ho! Oh! And in case you don't know, Blackwell GPUs, the, the RTX 5000 series, aren't that great in many scenarios, but one of the things that they are great at is overclocking. Even though many testers, they test the card stock versus stock because that's the normal thing to do, overclocking is a major part of the RTX 5000 series because most of those cards can easily do like 300 MHz plus on core, so they can go from like 2700 MHz to 3000 MHz or sometimes even 2100 MHz, depending on your luck. And that brings a huge performance leap, usually over the 10% that we're used to, kind of depends on the game. And in some case scenarios like we're gonna do on this video, you can actually get better performance than stock at a lower power draw. So today we're going to overclock and undervolt the RTX 5070 and no, it doesn't really matter your model, it doesn't really matter if you have an RTX 5070 from Nvidia, from Palit, from... Uh, doesn't really matter the brand of the cooling system, if your card is an RTX 5070, this tutorial applies. And no, this won't degrade your GPU, so don't worry about that. So first thing we're gonna use is MSI Afterburner. It is one of the most used applications nowadays if you want to have an overlay, whatever. So open MS Afterburner. And this is the new style of MS Afterburner. The older one was quite different. And now since 2025, the beginning of 2025, I believe, we got a new version and this is now the standard style or the standard skin of MS Afterburner. And as for our standard sponsor, it obviously is GVG Mo. Guys, GVG Mo. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Uh, we have here the core clocks, the memory clocks, the voltage applied right now in the same moment, and then the temperatures. And then you have, of course, the user profiles that you can use, and you have the clock for the memory and core in megahertz, of course. Then we have the core percentage, fan speed, power limit, and so on. Now, let's start with overclocking. In case you are overclocking, just overclocking, trying to get the maximum performance you can get out of this card, the first thing that you really want to do is go to the power limit, raise the power limit to 110 and this this actually depends on your model so some models might actually allow 115 some 120 but i would say that on the rtx 5070 the most models will allow you around 10 percent more so 110 percent power limit this is usually what we get and this alone will mean that the card has a higher power roof imagine that the card is consuming let's say 200 or 210 watts if the card is consuming 210 watts, but it is already power limited, the moment you increase the power limit, what it means is that the card will be able to consume more power, and if the card is able to consume more power, it will automatically boost the clocks to a higher level. And if the clocks are boosted to a higher level, your performance will be better. Although on the NVIDIA card, especially the RTX 5000 series, that doesn't really happen in all scenarios since in most games the GPU won't really achieve the maximum power level. There are some games like for example Cyberpunk 2077 where your GPU will, will really really struggle in terms of power limits but there are some games in terms of CS2 even if you're not CPU bottlenecked or games like The Altars or games like Call of Duty for example where the power limits won't be reached. So in those games if you increase the power limit the difference will be basically zero especially with the RTX 5070, but in games like Cyberpunk 2077, as soon as you increase the power limit, the performance will automatically increase as well. And this is the first step, so you increase the power limit and usually when you increase the power limit you also increase the temperature limit. And by the way there is a new version, a new beta version of MS Afterburner that unlocks some new features for the RTX 5000 series. Maybe the temperature limit is also one of those features, I don't really know, but I wouldn't really care because the results are still there. As for the core, core percentage in terms of voltage and so on, let's start with the core megahertz first. One of the things that I love the most ab about Blackwell GPUs is how much they overclock in terms of core. For example, if you look at the RTX 5070, it is basically a 4070 Super. I mean, performance-wise, the 5070 is basically a 4070 Super. In some scenarios, the 4070 Super is even 
faster, which is kind of a letdown. But as soon as you overclock, in most scenarios, the 5070 is faster. This is nothing to brag about. What I mean is that these cards come kind of severely underclocked. The, um, while the 4070 Super comes at, let's say, 28, 2900 megahertz, depending on the model, the 5070 comes at around 2700. Even though it should be able to achieve higher frequencies, because of course, it is using a better node. But it doesn't, it comes at 2600, 2700, depending on the game, and it can go like 3000, 3100 MHz easier. So, if we're talking about the RTX 5070, I believe that you can most surely start at 200 MHz. Almost any car that I touched can do 200 MHz on core without a single issue and I mean like a single issue no crashes and so on in the first drivers there were some crashes but now that the drivers are stabilizing core boost is completely fine and you can do plus 200 megahertz without any issue and this is the base because the core boost is not equal for all games resolutions and so on on top of these 200 you can try and go 250 and you do apply you go play some games you go play cyberpunk you go you go play the altar space marine 2 whatever play let's say for half an hour if half an hour is fine then keep raising it now let's try 300 click on it 300 apply 300 megahertz is fine you didn't have any crash so let's try another thing plus 350 and you keep doing like this like 350 400 till your system crashes if your system crashes let's say at 350 then you need or you know that you need to go down to 300 and if you are playing for several hours and if your system crashes at plus 300 then you know that you need to go back to 250 again it all comes to if a system crashes or not if the system crashes after some hours you know that it seems stable but it isn't really stable and you need to go down a bit on the core clock but for me i tested that plus 350 megahertz and it was completely fine tested several games over 40 games no issues whatsoever played with the card a lot with plus 350 megahertz and it was fine and the card was boosting around 3 gigahertz 30 50 megahertz so around that from the stock 2700 which is a huge difference so increasing the power limit plus the core megahertz will already increase the performance a lot. Now, another thing that we have is the memory clock. So we increase the core clock that, that also has a huge range in terms of overclocking on the Blackwell GPUs RTX 5000 series, but the memory is more or less the same since we now have GDDR7. And it seems that in most scenarios, these GPUs also come with... Um, well, kind of, I wouldn't say stripped down, but kind of a slowed down GDDR7 modules. This is in effective speed, not real speed, so it will appear like 14,000 MHz on your MS Afterburner overlay. And going from 14,000 MHz to 16,000 MHz, so plus 2,000, is completely doable because again it is gddr7 and with gddr6x i believe on the previous gpus like the 4070 super uh we could do like plus 1000 plus 1500 and in some really good scenarios in terms of binning i would say like plus 2000 but that was in really good scenarios where you had a really good luck of the draw in terms of the memory binning but with rtx 5000 series almost every single gpu will do plus 1500 you can start with plus 1500 and it is almost certain that it won't have any issues and from 1500 onwards it's just a matter of trying like the same the same that we did with the core megahertz it's the same and we start with 1500 megahertz which is the point again the point that i told you to start with or to start at and i'm pretty sure that it won't have any issues with 1500 megahertz now for example you can try 1600 if 1600 is fine again the same process as we did for the core if 1500 or 1600 are fine you don't really have any crashes at least for half an hour of your gameplays then go to 2700 do the same process till you reach 2000 megahertz and again for my case scenario 2000 megahertz is pretty achievable i didn't really try much more than that because you can try 2500 3000 especially on that newer version of ms afterburner that unlocks the maximum core um, the maximum memory frequency to 3000 and that really happens because that's how much 
the, um, the RTX 5000 series can overclock in terms of VRAM because of the GDDR7. Generally speaking, it just works. You won't have any issues. What usually happens when you overclock the VRAM too much is that you start getting errors. And that's, that's not an issue because the system and the GPU itself, they have something called error correction. So they correct those errors, but in order to correct those errors, it takes GPU power. So that extra power that you are getting from a higher memory frequency will be spent on those same error corrections and you'll basically get no performance whatsoever. In some scenarios, it is better to have 1500 MHz than 2000 MHz because at 1500 MHz you don't really have to do error correction, so overall you'll get better performance than at 2000 MHz. Even though again, that with GDDR7, 2000 MHz is like pretty standard and most GPUs will only start getting errors at let's say uh, 2500, 2200, 2300, so 2000 MHz should be fine. And with this scenario you basically have your card overclocked. We have power limit at 110, we have the core megahertz at 350 and the memory megahertz at plus 2000 and in this case scenario you're getting a lot of FPS. But what about if you don't really want the maximum performance and you're looking for stock performance or maybe better than stock performance by a little but with lower power draw? Well, in a matter of fact it's quite easy. I found that in these, in these recent GPUs you can do many things, like some people can mess with the voltage, for example, we can go to the Curve Editor and just under volt and so on, but I found that for these RTX 5000 series, the same way happens with the AMD RX 9000 series, it's exactly the same. I found that the best thing that you can do and the easiest thing that you can do is just go to the power limit, just leave the memory overclock and the core overclock the same and just go to the power limit and decrease it. I found that 85% of power limit, which is minus 15%, is what you want in terms of power saving. You'll get around, well, that's a lot of light now. You, you will get around, I would say, stock performance in some cases, even better that stock performance and generally lower power draw. If we're talking about those case scenarios where the power draw is really pushed like Cyberpunk 2077, you will definitely get better performance than stock while also consuming less power. But you can go even further. If you want to, let's imagine that you are currently at let's say 190, so the overclocking settings will be like 240, the stock will be like 220, and with these settings 85% you are like 190 watts. If you want less than that, if you want to go less, let's say 80, you can go. If you want to go 75, you can go just keep the overclocking settings and decrease the power limit um, considering what you want or what you don't want in terms of power draw. If you want less power draw, decrease it. If you want more power draw but more performance, increase it. And that's basically how it works with these new GPUs. You don't really need to fiddle with the voltage and so on, that's, that's not needed anymore, just mess with the power limit while keeping the overclocking settings and it will give you either the best performance or the best power saving features by just messing with a power slider. It is as easy as it can be. And well guys, I guess there's not really much more to say. If you want or if you have any doubts, just leave them in the comment section as usual. I'll answer as fast as I can. Uh, Really, don't be shy. If you have any questions, comment in the comment section. I know that some questions might be dumb or you might think that they're dumb, um, but people sometimes people are just beginners. They don't really know what they're looking for. Um, if it is an issue, for example, if your system crashed or, or so on, usually if your system is crashing or giving you artifacts, just reduce the memory frequency or reduce the core frequency. This is kind of the golden rule. If it is crashing, reduce the values. But again, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these settings, if these settings work for you, because I believe that copying these settings will work for most users. But again, it is a matter of luck because you might buy 10 or 20 RTX 5070 GPUs and all of them will overclock slightly different. Some will overclock better, some will overclock worse. That's basically how it works. Thank you very much again, leave your comment in the comment section, hope this video helped you in some way and see you in the next one. Cheers.
Of repair kits, you know? 